Mario. Hi, how are you? Great. How you doing? It's too early, but I'm a Yankee, you know. <laughs> and I, I think you are too. No, I'm not. Uh -huh. uh, Tvila for electric utensils. This is a Tvila's Cayman still. Remember when you buy a cleave from a, a Gentile, it needs to have Tvila. It has nothing to do with Heksher. So one of the biggest halachic challenges concerning Tvila's Kalim is whether and how to immerse electrical appliances that come in contact with food, such as electric urns, sandwich makers, toaster ovens. On the one hand, all these appliances have metal elements that come into direct contact with edible food, which means that the halacha should be that they require tefillah. On the other hand, immersing electrical appliances into water could ru ruin them. The Poskim who have grappled with this question have suggested four major approaches. Some, came, some Poskim hold that it's exempt from tefillah. This approach is quoted by the Sefer Akashrus, Yesh Deot HaSovrot, Shabalavachi Kli Chashmali Patur Me'atvala, that some hold that electric utensils do not have to have tefillah skin. Mishum Shishimu Shorak Meshash Mechubar L'Chashmal, they are operated only when they're connected to electricity. Therefore, nechshav kemechubar lekarka. It's considered, the heter is, it's considered like it's mechubar lekarka. Now you and I could come up with, our, what about battery operated? It's not mechubar lekarka. Anyways, the Shevet Alevi strongly rejects this opinion. By the way, the, uh, the one who suggested this Hector was Rav Yaakov Breich, the Chalkas Yaakov, who is a, was a first cousin of my mother. Rav Breich was married to a carnial. My mother's a carnial. And all of the, uh, uh, all the correspondence during World War II for my family went through Zurich. Rav Breich lived in Zurich. His children still live there. Uh, our good friend, uh, Mario, what's your brother-in-law's name? Itcho. Yeah, Itcho knows Rabbi Breish's grandchildren. Uh, Rabbi Breish was a major rav in Switzerland for, you know, over 50 years. He's the Chalkas Yaakov. He was a major posik in Europe at the time that Rav Moshe was operating in America. So they were the two poskim in that period of time that dealt with a lot of modern halachic shins. So Chalkas Yaakov gave a heter because it's connected to the Mechubar Lekarka. So Shevet HaLevi, um, Rav Vosner, says, Al Yishali B'chala Tira Pi Mishorat Salomar, don't think that you have a heter, according to the one who wants to say, the Kivet HaMechubar Mal Yedei Achut Lakot and Likrak Tliya Mechubar Lekarka Shepotim Ben Atfilo. Don't use that. Delani Azdaiti, Zehevel Urut Ruach, Dehagufa Dikli Tolush, he says this concept that a utensil that is attached to the ground through a plug should be exempt from immersion through this is not correct. So of course, with the Shemel Levi argues, so Rav Asher Weiss, the Minchas Usher, holds that electric utensils might be exempt for a different reason. The halacha would not oppose an obligation that would ruin the utensil. Although he attempts to support this argument in a number of different ways, he ultimately is hesitant to rely upon this logic to decide the practical halacha. He's, he thinks that a kli that you would be unable to be toivel without destroying it, which should be potter. It's not that a tefillah's kelim is a matir, which means 
something is prohibited, you need to be moderate. No. Ela mitzvah. Oh, Mr. Mean, it, is it, that, it, is it, it, what was that? It's interesting. I'm, I'm read, I've not read ahead, but, you know, these items, whether they're plugged in or where, until they're turned on, they're useless. There's no clee to it. You know, a battery-operated toaster is useless. It's not a clee. It's not even a clee. What is it? Why not? Why isn't it a clee? What is it? If it, until you turn it on, it's completely useless. If so you, you look, turn it on, and then it's useful. So so what? So why it, why why would that invalidate it as a clee? Because it has it has to it has to be a. Uh, 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 it's not like a clee you put in an oven where the oven is doing the cooking. The clee itself is is is, is the is the fire of it. Whatever right. It is. So that's a clee. But the, but the clee is useless until you actually energize it. Okay, but why should that be a tour? Because it's not a clee. No, they, that's not how. So right now they're not holding like that. That they're, it's clearly a, a clee that's coming in contact with food. It's not a clee that you put in the oven. It's sort of got its, it's got its own oven. It cre it's, it's a clee that holds the food and then cooks it. Like a bread maker or like any of these electric appliances. Right. Okay, so we have that's to- why, yeah, that's actually, why by, by, by that <laughs> token, if you have an oven, you have to do a, an oven too. No, an, an oven- it's a, it's a clee also. A regular oven, it's a clee. I mean, I, I'm trying to understand the Shevard Alevi's answer. So he says it's putter from immersion. Well, an oven, to elaborate. hang on. An oven could certainly be considered mechuba lakarka. Remember, something mechuba lakarka is not is is going to be taken out of the realm of a kli, and therefore would not require tviva. Because an oven is connected to your house. A house is mechuba lakarka, and those are so, not kli. So that's the same idea with a toaster oven. Or no, a toaster like is not connected. A toaster can be moved. By, elect by electrical, it is connected to the house. But what if it's battery? And it's not connected if it's to battery, the battery. First, you're not going to find a toaster oven that has batteries, I don't but, think. But you, okay, but, okay. <laughs> but so first of all, the Shevet Alevi did not accept, as you saw from his language, this concept that just because something is plugged into the ground, that it becomes Bechobar Lakarka. That he didn't so accept he, that. He, so, excuse me. So, you wouldn't agree on an oven either? No. Because you plug something into an electric outlet doesn't make it mechobar lakarka. It's temporarily mechobar lakarka. Then you unplug it, then you move it. But if you have it's a regular not, oven that you can move in and out, it's not, I'm not even talking about a wall oven. Take a regular stove, a stove with an oven underneath. No. You can move it, it moves in and out. You know, it, it's not. Uh, it's not attached to the walls to anything. So why can't that be the same idea? Well, does that come in contact with food directly? What do you mean? Remember, Tfilas Kalim, you need to be toivel the metal item that the food comes in contact with. Okay, so, so you have an oven, you have racks, you put no, the food so the racks, the, on the racks. They, they are, we dealt with the racks require Tfilas Kalim. Yes. But the oven itself does not require to be less scaling. The same thing with a toaster oven. Then the rack is the one that you have to be toiling and not inside. No, but but the, that, that's not movable. That you can't remove that. So you can remove a, a rack in a toaster oven. Of course you can. I'm not talking about the toaster oven. Oh, Let's right. talk about a toaster where you put the bread in a toaster. Oh, a regular toaster? Yeah. Mm. The, the, I, first of all, I would say very clearly that if you had a toaster or oven that you could remove the grills that you put the food on in a chanami, you would just have to be toivel that. You would not have to be toivel the, but they talked about an urn, right? A hot water urn, where you put the water in the urn, okay? Or, mm -hmm. or a toaster and a bread, excuse me, bread and a toaster, which goes, so, so. In the theory, a urn, a urn you can crush it, you can put water all the way to the top, let it overflow what? slightly okay. well, and it'll be fine. But according to Rabbi Breish, an mm -hmm. urn does not require tefillah's kelim. He Sorry, gave that's not toiveling. Toiveling is, kashering has got nothing to do with toiveling. We're not talking about kashering. We're talking about tefillah in a mikra. We're talking about tefillah. Uh, Correct. Okay. So, so. But an so urn, you could be toivel an urn because an yeah. urn. Even so, though any, so, so what we've learned so far is Rabbi Breish would not require 
the urn to be toivel because of this connection to the ground. And now Rav, Rav Weiss says, Rav, Rav Weiss wants wants to say that halacha would not require tvila of something that would ruin the kli in the tvila. That would make no sense. So therefore, he wants to say that a kli that would be damaged by putting into water does not require tvila. I, I don't under, I don't understand that. A, 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 a kli is a kli. The, the, the chachamim didn't make any basis for whether you're going to damage it or not damage it, yep. whether it needs tefillah or not. Where's he the basis? Says, he says, it's mistaber, the kliya miskalkel. I understand, he says it's mistaber, but it's not. It's anus, not anusu militovlo. If it's ef shalitovlo, belila shriso, potter menat tefillah legamri. Umuter lishtamish bobli tefillah. That's what. His havamina is. So any yeah. any kli, any keli, forget what that is, whether it's machubed lakarka, not machubed lakarka, that you think is going to get damaged by putting it in water, you can use it without putting it in water, without putting it in a, in a, in a tobling. Is that what he said? That's what he said. That's, yeah. that, that's what he said. Now, that's a big chidush. But he didn't, he didn't, let, you're reading along with me. Oh, the komitza satvila. The concept is to be toivel it before you use it. But if through the tvila you're never going to be able to use this kli because you damaged it, it makes no sense to require tvila. Chachamim would not require that. But then it's not a shame. It's not a shame kli. Well, it's a kli, but it's a type of kli that's going to be damaged by tvila. That's not considered. Yes, it is. It doesn't take it out of Torah's clue. Yeah, see what he finishes. So, there has to be a new definition for that. His analysis does not remove it from the definition as a clue. He just wants to say that Chachamim would not be would not create a halacha. He, uh, he, he he's he's some that's a summation that we we have to base on on what. That's a, that's a semi, that's his, there. that's his smart. Ah. No, but read on, read on, you'll see what he says. Ah, I'm sorry, sorry. I, I can't read. I look at the pictures, I don't read. Ah, mi kevan shadvarim mechudashim. He says, I know what I'm saying is a big chidush. V'loraiti mi shahalach v'derech zu. He says he found no source or support for his svara. I'm afraid of my colleagues. And therefore, he will not be soy mechaniza teri lamaisa and will require tefillah. It's exactly what Rav Usher Weiss says. So that's approach number one that perhaps these kind of kalim don't require tefillah at all. Approach number two dismantling and having a Jew repair it. The Chachmas Adam discusses utensil that is too big to immerse in a mikvah. And in that context, he doesn't agree with the first approach, where if you can't be toivalit, uh, or if it's mechor belakarka because it's so heavy that it's considered mechor belakarka, you, you're potter from tvila. He doesn't agree with that. He offers another suggestion that it may be dismantled and then repaired by a Jewish repairman. That way it's considered as if it were fashioned by a Jew and tefillah would not be required. He says, There were big cauldrons that they would brew beer. The Chochmah lived about 200, 300, 250 years ago. Nearly the Tzrich and tefillah. He says it requires tefillah. And even those, those are fixed to the ground, like an oven, right? You guys asked about an oven, the same kind of thing. If you have a big, big kli that's fixed to the ground, and it's therefore, it's kavua. He says it doesn't take it out of Torah's kli. And he says, you have to be toivalu. Is that Ernie, is a barrel considered a kli? A barrel is a kli. 
Yes. Yeah. So so basically, every but a barrel barrel's not made out of metal. wine barrel. Barrel's not made out of metal. All right. yeah, we learned it's got to be metal or glass. Yeah, but but all these, um, if you go into all the wineries, right, yeah. you see that these huge things that they make the wine in, that they ferment the wine in, they're all metal today. I don't know if you've been in a winery, but the winery has this huge, huge. Um, so that would know. be, so that would be, so. so but it's yeah. not like it's on the ground. But you, but you yeah, want to see They're all tanks. That, they're all metal the Chuch, tanks. Tanks. The Chok Adam, tanks. The Chok says just because it's Bechor Belakarka, you still have to dismantle it. Yeah, so I don't know how they, how, how, how do they, I would like to know from what you heard, so how they, 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 if they so total those all, cali. So Walter, first of all, if it's manufactured by a Jew, it doesn't need Tvila. I'm not convinced that those big I, I tanks just that they make one. I'm just saying, the, we, we got to go through step by step. If it was manufactured by a Gentile, then there's this, the, the, the issue might, have, might, might, be a, uh, might be an issue if it's made out of metal. Nearly de lam takona achiat vilem, oshi in kovahem nekem gadol. So what you have to do is you have to make a big hole in it. Kideshi it batel mitoras kli, vaaz yitakein uman li Israel. So Walter, if you bought a big, a big, that from a Gentile. So you would take a, a blowtorch, make a big hole in it, and that would be Mizbatilit Mitoras Kli. Then you call a Jewish repairman to come and 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 weld it back together. And weld it back together, and now you have a Jewish Kli and it doesn't require to be. They bring the Igris Moish in a footnote saying where it is possible that he's assuming that electric appliances would be, be ex where was that? Where, where is? Would indeed be exempt from Tvila. See also the article in Tvila, Kalim. Uh, it mentioned practical Alafic ones. No, that's, that's why he, he was fearful of his colleagues. See Igros Moshe, where it's possible he is assuming that electric appliances would indeed be exempt from tefillah. But then, then, he, then he would certainly have someone to rely on. I'm not sure why he would be Mustafina from his, from his Chavroi. So let's go weiter. Okay, I'm about Usher Wise. I'm talking about Usher, who said he, he has not Paskin like it because he, he hasn't found anybody to support him. I don't know what they want from this footnote. Anyways, Rishlom Zaman Auerbach agrees with the Chochmas Adam and suggests that the same idea can be applied to our case of an electric appliance. Kli chashmali, yesh litzarev data omrim, the blavachi enaton tefillah. First of all, he says you could rely on the chalkas yakol, who says they don't even need tefillah. Hol the ikr tashmisha shala kli u b'shash u'mechobal yedei takai makarka. You see, Rav Shlom Zaman accepts it. He says when it's plugged into the wall, it's considered mechobar l'karka. So you, you could combine that opinion the gam bitsiruf im piruk kaze. He likes the idea of of dismantling the toaster. Shemavatol al saklim etash mishav ena rol l'shim shal yidei uman shiitaknu. Then you bring it to a Jewish appliance fixer. Choshveni deafshar lifter v'chiyai gavne mitvila. So he thinks using these two tsirufim of heter, you can avoid. Um, you, you can understand. You can if you understand how electricity works. So basically, the electricity is grounded. If it's not grounded, the whole thing's gonna be a big problem. So that's why it's considered mechuba lakarka. The plug can be in the right. wall, but it has to be grounded. Well, because uh, the, the there is a ground, like you say, and the electric no, no, wires. No, the electricity itself has to be grounded. Otherwise, it doesn't. Right, because one of the plugs is a ground and goes mm -hmm. down to ground, and then and then some of it goes to the wire, but the wire is also in the ground. And it's certainly connected to the house. So I, I, I certainly see that that's svar. What about approach number three? Transferring ownership to a Gentile. Rabbi Kiva Eger, in discussing the case of the Chochmas Adam, right, a utensil that was too large to toivel, suggested another loophole. 
transferring ownership of the utensil to a Gentile and then having the Gentile grant him permission to use it and keep it in his home indefinitely. That means he doesn't really acquire it. Remember, it's only if it transfers Rishus from the Gentile to, uh, to a Jewish home, then it requires Tvila. Rabbi Kiva Eger is going to use the concept that leave it in the possession of the Gentile, and he gives you permission to use it. So, He's talking about big, big bear, like Walter asked about earthenware barrels that are covered with lead in which wine is placed. So what kind of mikveh can you use? Right? You can't fit them in a mikveh because of how big they are. Give it to a Gentile, loan it, uh, give it to him, and then you, you borrow it from him. It's similar to the harama we do by Mechiras Chametz. Rabbi Vadya Yosef in Alicha Solom adopts this solution as the preferred one practically. Wow. Kum kum chashmali. You have uh, an electric water tea kettle. Shim yitmu b'mayim shal ha-mikvah l'adbila yizkakel. If you put it in the mikvah, it'll ruin it. Yitneu b'matona l'goy. Using this Rabbi Kiva Eger, give it to a goy as a gift. V'yachzu v'yashilenu v'yenu borrow it back from him. Ki ha-shor alo ha-soch v'kelim chadoshim in ha-goy potim l'adbila. If you merely borrow or rent kalim from a non-Jew, you don't have to, you don't have to be toy with them. Unless you acquire it, so it becomes yours, you're potter from tefillah. In Midian, uh, the utensils were, you know, were taken ownership by the Jews because they had taken them in booty. What's the approach number four? The fourth approach is that since all of the other suggestions are either questionable halakhically or practically difficult to execute, you should immerse the appliance. Says the Sefer HaKashrus, Kelema chayovim ba'advala umutukenes ba'em marechas kashmalim or electroni. There is some kind of electric component to them. B'midah sa'ev shumat vilam also kedin umamtini nachi yityashu. You should be toivel them and then dry them out really well, and then use them. In fact, this suggestion is mentioned by many other contemporary halachic posts. Can they explain that if one waits sufficient time for the appliance to dry, the appliance will always work perfectly and not be ruined. It's also worthwhile to note that according to Rav Moshe, a toaster that is used only to make bread into toast is actually exempt from tefillah. Yibush pas. It's not a critical act. You're not baking the bread. It's already baked bread. Remember we learned last week that it has to be a kli that's needed for su'uda. And it's already baked bread. You're just toasting it. And therefore, he wants to say, make red in. The toaster does not require tefillah. But this idea of Rav Moshe is very novel, since the definition of clay suda seems to be based on whether the utensil is used during food preparation and not based upon how necessary the utensil is. And in fact, the other postkin didn't accept, didn't accept uh, this heter of Rav Moshe. But you have Rav Moshe to rely on regarding toasters. What about storage containers and jars? What is the halacha concerning metal or glass containers that one buys in the store that contain food inside, such as canned vegetables or cookies? Must one remove all of the contents the minute they are opened and then be toiveling? Even if that is not necessary, may one 
use such a container multiple times after the initial contents are finished. Rosh Hashanah rules that it is unnecessary to remove all the food immediately and one may eat directly from the utensil without tefillah. But if one wishes to reuse it, one should be toivalent, since reusing it gives it the status of a halachic utensil. Near it. If you come home with a glass kli that's got a lot of food in it, you can eat from it. You can eat from it right away. You don't have to empty it first. Number one, kufsa skura umusugere. Something that's sealed. Which is not similar to like a bottle cap. Keep in the commotion is skura. While it's closed, if it's closed, you can't. It's not. You can't use it. Just like you cannot open up uh, a sealed utensil on Shabbos. If, if your kavana is because you want to use that kli again, you should time the chashuv close to kli Shabbos because if by doing that you've manufactured a kli on Shabbos, who had the nami the chashuv and he don't did that. It same the same principle applies to us. Kinasa kli ayude Yisrael. If you're going to open it up, the kli was made by you. Upatul lagam remitvila ula main lahakel. Then they sheein zek kol kach bar. He says, I'm not going to rely on that. It's not that clear. Number two, kivan sheein mechayvin lo tzimi yadis amaychol makli shel nochri. One is not obligated to remove it right away. Mistaber du adin nami shemutul lachol makus. He can eat directly from the kufsa. It's kavona is not to keep it there for a for a kli. Usually after you finish it, you throw it away. According to the first reason given, perhaps even a utensil that is reused would not be required to be toiled since the Jew transformed it into a lachic utensil. According to the second reason, since the main reason for exemption is that one attempts to dispose of it, one who chooses not to dispose of it would be obligated to toivel it. Since Rosh Hashanah didn't want to rely upon the first reason alone, it therefore seems that he would argue that reusing disposable utensils would require one to immerse them. Rav Herschel Sechter has been quoted as holding that a Snapple bottle should be obligated in tefillah even without reusing it, since the glass bottle itself is quite sturdy and capable of being used, even if no one does. Gordon Rav Schechter, one would have to pour out the contents of the bottle into a different container before drinking from it. I, I did not know of that Chumrah of Rav Shefter. I think not to worry, they made them, they're making them plastic now. On the other hand, Rav Moshe holds that one need not toivel it, even if one decided to reuse it. The Dover Aminim there are certain things that you buy that are sold with the kli itself. They are there for kabbala kli I can't imagine how many Coca Cola bottles you would have. Yeah, but it's, but Walter, Coca Cola bottles you, you throw away. That's mamish you throw away. No one reuses. No, it. in the old days you had a sturdy glass Coca Cola bottle. Come on, you gave it back. It's not you didn't throw oh, it away. Walter, you gave it back to get like they gave you money. When yeah. you gave back old bottles, but you didn't reuse it as a kli. So it's a different concept. Here they want to say the Snapple bottle is very sturdy and people might use that as a kli. I think a Coca bottle would not qualify. That was, people just threw it out. Then they paid you, if people came in with Coke bottles, they paid you because so, they recycled it. But not that you would use it as a kli. I'm, I'm not convinced in the old days, maybe they use it for water, they use it for something else. Uh, and if you had Fanta bottles, you had all these bottles in the old days when we grew up, maybe it's before your time. Yeah, but you, but you Harold couldn't recap it. You couldn't, huh? you couldn't put the cap back on because yeah. you had to use a can or a bottle right. opener so you could uh, never reuse me, it. This is not even a new question. You know, bottles of milk used to be delivered in glass bottles at people's houses. But you gave right. that I, back. You gave that back. You own it. No, you gave that, those bottles you gave back. You put the bottles back in the thing and the milkman would pick up the bottles. You, you would, argue would take the, same, the bottles back. You could argue the same thing, uh, you gave it back, the same thing about 
about the Snapple, the so, recyclables. So, but hang on. No, 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 no. This is a good halachic discussion. The bottles didn't belong to us. If, if Dairy King, it belonged to Dairy King. It didn't, it didn't transfer ownership to us. So it's not like, oh, we're gonna now use this cleat. It belonged to the company. We drank the milk, you put the bottle back on, they took it back. So that would not require oh, feeling. True. They and, that would, and they counted on they counted on you to return it so that they could give deliver you more. It's not to say it wasn't yours to keep. You didn't buy it. You bought the milk. I'm not, sure, the I'm not sure they didn't have a shame bottles on it. No, I'm you not absolutely sure. did not. Absolutely did not. They same thing with the you. seltzer bottles. The seltzer bottles were the same. Same thing. Yeah, gotta give it back. Now, today when we buy a bottle, you keep it. Then it's a the bigger problem because you've bought it from a gentile, now it's yours, that's why they're dealing with this issue. Can you drink directly from it? So that's why there's this deal back and forth. Can you, can you see Rav, Rav Schechter is requiring you to buy the Snapple, not to drink it directly from there, you have to pour it in something else before you use it. And if you're gonna use it again, you have to be toyful, it's not to throw it away. But he doesn't want you to drink from the tea from a kli that had not been toyful. That's what's going on here, because you now own it. But that's speak. But a, I'm not sure a Coke bottle would have the same thing. But we'd have to ask him. But the, see, he wants to say the Snapple bottle is very sturdy. It's a big bottle. Has a big opening. Has a cap. Like Harold said, the Coke bottles were thrown away. I'm talking about the old Coke, but the small old Coke bottles that you that you flip. The bottle opener. Now, now if you were going to use it for a flower pot, because people used to plant flowers in the Coke bottle, but that's not a clay suda. You wouldn't need to feel it because of that, because it's not being used for food. So we, we've been given the, the criteria how to analyze these shilas. That's what we're doing today in all these good questions. Try yes, if, you're, if you were growing pot in it or not, but that's okay. <laughs> now, the Dabra Minim Shri Nikarim Davke Makli Ben Adet Likabala Kli Bechazara, Kamoha Kans Shem Dino Senu, right? Buying a soda can, the Chaim Sluchyo Shal Yain Srat Chadome. Or liquor bottles, in bekane otam minochri. If you buy them from goyim, im tzarek letavlam kisharotz lishtamish bem akash sheharika ochlam. Like you want to use the bottle after it's empty. Nira la niyus daiti she ain't srichin litvo. Shrei bot lo kan kan la yayin liknos bekesef meiser the yotzel achulin. That means when you buy with kesef meiser wine. The kankan is bottled to the wine. Kimoha or shall behema, the kosher came back cans. Should doiming tzas the chosloy shall tomorrow. He wants to say it's like uh, the skin of an animal or or utensils made out of dates. Shabor chayim, machshib zeki klipa se gozim, avalu davke the oven, shabot la klipa de demais or shame. Meaning the, 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 the utensil becomes bottled to the item that you, if, if you, for example, have Meister Shaney and you want to go to your Shalayim and buy wine with it, the, 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 you paid for the container as well. It becomes ordinary. It, it, was, it, it had the same din as the wine. And uh, he says the same thing as for the cans. So he says you would not have to be toyed with them. Okay. 197. What, what would happen? What would happen in the, you know, you used to have the fancy whiskey bowls where they were like a decanter. Some Tory whiskey used to have like a decanter. People kept it. So, what, what so, you would have to so, pour the whiskey out, have, toggle the bottle, then put the whiskey back in the bottle? Absolutely. So, what, what Rav Rishel Shetler said about the Snapple is you can't drink it directly from that glass because you're drinking from a glass that's not been toggled. So, you have to drink it into a cup drink the tea, then if you want to use the bottle again, you have to be toivalent. Alachas kama vakama, what you're describing. If you have a fancy utensil that you're certainly going to use a utensil, going to use over and over again, you would have to do the same thing. Okay. What about using utensils of others that have not been immersed? You're visiting another Jewish family where they're not makpid on tefillah's keli. What to do if you're being hosted by individuals well, you know that they have not been toiled their dishes. So it's forbidden me Rabbonon to use utensils for eating that have not been toiled. But yet, if one is being hosted by others, it's often difficult to request that they toiled their dishes prior to one's using them. 
contemporary Porskim have adopted different approaches as to the proper practice. Rabbi Vadya forbids using the utensils. If you're a guest in your friend's house, and, and you know that the people have not been taught with their kalim, you may not eat a drink until you do until they've been toiled. So, by the way, all of us know and have grown up with rabbonim that were very choishish about going being uh, going over other people's homes to eat there, and very often it wasn't because of kashrus; it was because of this concept, filas kalim. You have to, there's, there, people assume that uh, because of strict standards of kashrus, so people didn't eat in other people's homes. But you can see here that the concept of filas kalim is just as important because it's, it's usher to eat from kalim that have not been toivel. According to the Sefer kashrus, one should make sure to use only utensils that are not obligated in tefillah, such as plastic or disposable or other non-metal and non-glass utensils. In addition, one should eat using one's hands and not the silverware. Right? It was, they were purchased. You should ask to be served on plastic. You should eat your hands or your napkin. Yeah, but then you have to worry about, Ernie, you have to worry about the utensils that they used to cook the food. You know, pots, pans, so you can't eat, I mean, then, you know, well, you shouldn't be eating, the period. Like this. I, I think it's, it's pro, it could be very common that people who know all the laws of kashrus, and you're not choishish at all, that they're going to feed you non-kosher food, but, you know, they, not everybody may be up on the laws of tefillah's kalim. Correct. You assume that they go hand in hand. I, I wouldn't have such an assumption. Um, and... Therefore, could be totally kosher. Let let's let's continue. We'll see. These are very machmir opinions. According to Yaakov Ariel, who is a is probably the biggest Mizrahi godel today. In uh, he's the Rav Rashi of Ramat Gan. He was supposed to be the chief rabbi, or he was in running for the chief rabbi rabbinate, uh, along with Rav Stav, in this past election. And he's a prominent posik. One may even use utensils that are obligated to be toivel, at least on a one-time basis. He explains that one who has no responsibility to toivel the dishes cannot be held responsible for using them without tefillah, which he claims is a prohibition focused on the person, i.e., the one responsible for them. It means the person who bought them. He, it's like a, it's like a, it's like a chiyu like gavra. Din gavra. It's a din gavra. It's it, a din kefta. That's what the Rav Yaakov Arya wants to say. That's a big thing yes, because the chetzi is what needs to be toivot, not the gavra. Correct, but but the, since you purchased it, the the, the chiyuv is rummy on you. Says his sefer is called Oyal Shel Toira. I am the sefer Tfilas Kalim. Shekasa b'shem Shut Beit Avi. Shenot Shenotel Boreach. He's lenient when you go to visit that you you could eat from any. The, you can go to a visitor's house and eat. You're not renting or borrowing, so therefore you're not assuming any ownership of these kalim. You have no responsibility for the clue. The das of the shut vedavi, he sharaka baili, omishi yeshlo, ezel, ezo shehi baalot, o achrayut. It's only those people that have an iser to eat with these kalim. This svar only makes sense if that's only according to those opinions that we learned where Tfilas kalim is only rabbinic. Remember, uh, 
you might leave it and never toivin it. If, if you're not responsible, you're not in that zera that you're going to leave, leave this kalim alone. So it depends why you're doing the tefillah's kalim. According to or zarua, where he, he, there's a hekish to hagolah's kalim for, for kashrus, that means tefillah's kalim's requirement is derisa. The who is her chefza, like Walter said, mamish. According to that svara, you would not be able to use the svara of, of Isra Gavra. However, says uh, Rav Ariel, Anir lani udaiti, shigamu divrei or zarua lo mistaver lo mashakli lifnei tefila kamo kakli lifnei agola. He says there's a kli before tefila is not like a kli that you have in kashrut. Shorei oto kli bizman shu eitz lagoi when the kli was belonged to the non-Jew, muter b'shimush li Yisrael, it would have been allowed to be used by a Jew. Ba'od shakli shamish tamish, b'goy osur b'shimush li Yisrael. Any, any. As long as the, the Jew could use it, if it was not treif, but a a a kli that was used for non-kosher certainly forbidden for a Jew to use. Yes, why, why, why can't you use the same svara that we use when you go shop in Ralph's like on, on a Sunday, right? Because it's a public company, right? You really don't know who the buyer is. So if you buy all these kalim, and today most of these kalim are made by public companies. They're not made by great, small goyish. They're made by public companies who are making glass. So we, we learned that last week about the, dinner, the status of a corporation. So we said, practically, it seems that the prevalent custom is to immerse one's utensils, which were purchased from a corporation, and to make a bracha. We, there was a, a thought to say that perhaps it's not considered a specific owner. There, there, there were post scheme that gave a tearing if it was made by a corporate entity. No, but, but, but practically... But, no, but what, I'm, what I'm saying over here is that you, the, the person, person is feeding you or whatever it is, right? So they have something on Miri Smok. In other words, you, you, even though you don't have a Din Chefz or a Din Gabra over here, you have a Din that basically it's, one, it's like an arm's length. Even a corporation is more than an arm's length. There is no bylaws on that. Uh, it belongs to a corporation. I, I hear from last week. So anyways, let, let us, in Cain, al korcha enkan isr chefz alakli. <laughs> he connects the Isser Chefza me, to the Isser Gavra. He says, yes, it's a personal Ischaibu, so it's an Isser Gavra, and that creates the Isser Chefza. But it comes through the guy who owns it. A, an Oreach has no connection to that. That's how the Rav Yaakov Ariel is learning. So this is a hybrid. So he's using a very lumdish approach to say that a guest can eat at somebody's house without a problem. Comes very clearly uh, uh, the hetter by going to a guest. Rishlam Zaman Paskin is the same way. Susie, you missed very interesting halakha. So I'm going to watch it on the video. Person's visiting somebody who's not religious. We're talking about, yeah, can you eat from their kalim? They have, you assume that they have not done tefillah's kalim. And he wants to get, have him drink even a glass of water. But, but it, we assume it's not in toilet. Because he says in, the, in Shulchan Shlomo, which is Rosh Hashanah Zaman Sefer, Huva, Rabbeinu Kosov Shabakroi. It means in a, it's just temporary. First of all, they're not his. Number two, he has no capability of being toivalent. 
at the Ishtamshus. In, 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 in that specific situation, the Chachamim would never have, have prevented you. He allowed uh, people to, in the middle of Yushalayim, people are selling uh, drinks, maybe in a glass. You're allowed to buy it. A son goes to visit his parents that are not from. You have no ability to do it. Implying that if he has the ability to be toibulet, he should be try to be toibulet. What about visiting a public hotel or restaurants with dishes that were not immersed? When using utensils designated for serving food in a commercial setting only, such as a restaurant, there's an additional lenient consideration. In such a case, there's room to consider the utensils as being for commercial use, which as we saw in the previous year, are not obligated to be toivel, not clay suda, which are obligated to be toivel, especially for glassware, whose obligation for is only rabbinic. The dark truva mentions this. You can buy drinks from a Jewish seller of drinks, even though he hasn't been toivel as Kalim. For example, the bartender, right? He is no chiyuv to immerse them. He, he only purchased them for business purposes. And not for his own personal use. So it sounds like personal use is what's required to feel. So from Kedera doesn't have to be toy based Kaili. If it's used for business purposes, based on this doctor, well, what is it used for? It's not very used for himself. So it's far, used for so far, he only said about glassware, because glassware is midrabona. He didn't extend it yet to all the kelim. He said glassware. Yeah, but he, he was soymech. He was soymech on a on a certain. Um, yeah, okay. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, but they're using. But he said only glassware. So let's be careful what they were matter. They were matter glassware. If the Jew bought it to make business, we learned business before that he was like a middleman. He bought Kalim and he sold Kalim. So there we learned last week, he does, the guy who bought, who's the middleman doesn't have to be toy because it's for business. That chorm and the shach and the taz, that even the middleman has to be toivel, it's only metal. It's not toivel, not toivel. The klis chuchis, that we've got to be rabbon on yesh lisboch ala machaber varamo, the lo tzach tzvila klau. Ba'av shebalem shal atzluchis, even though the owners of the glass were mishtamshin v'tzluchis elu, the chiyai gav neich me ramo do osu yishtamish derech haroi v'lo tzvila. You can't even use for your own personal use temporarily without The original owners are buying these glasswares really to loan to other people. And they're only using them for personal use temporarily. So they are machmir regarding metal. And the Sefer Kastru cites this leaning opinion, but only as a yesh oimim. Let's say a restaurant, right? You go to bate malon hotels, misadot bate cafe. Yeshomrim shemutarin b'shimush pelot filots only a yeshomrim. Rav Shlomin Zaman in the Mincha Shlomin does not accept the logic of those achronim that consider these utensils to be commercial utensils, but nevertheless writes that when one has no option of immersing them, he may use them without tefila. Similar to his position when you visit as a guest in a private home. It doesn't appear correct that he's just a middleman selling dishes. Because 
Number one, maybe we could be mekel because it's Chomi Rabbonim. The Arbor Lan Al Tishtamish Bekli Elatadil Tchila. They said you should use the cleave only after you be toyful. Vim came, Kozek is Yochlad Vilo. That's if you have the ability to do it. Avul B'Malon B'Chadome Shelo Yidol L'Kachas Lad Vilo. The hotel's not going to let you go into a mikveh with the dishes they just gave you to be toybulim. Kibin derot zelech ovelishtos, since he wants to eat, shari lay. Gam efshar du adin ve'onen, shepotim b'nai mitzvahs, k'mo shu ochel below brocha, just like an onen eats without a brocha, kach mutu lishtamish below tvila. He can also eat without tvila. Onam, afim arminon, the isra ishtam shus rat min rabonon, you have no ability to be toiled You should do it. If you have the ability to be toiled you should be toiled What are you going to do? Uh, command that the Kalim should be toiled after his death? And then the Kalim will never. So he says, if you have the ability to do it, you should do it. Some are machmir. The same uh, I was says, asking the rabbi machshir of restaurants is machai of the restaurateur to to be to be um, to take his kalim all the kalim to be toiled with him. Uh, the only metal ones. If it's glassware, no, he may no, not but require I, it. And, and if what it's, about earthenware? That's not metal. If it's if it's lined with lead, then it would require it. We learned. And if it's got like a glass, if it's got some kind of glass coating, it would also require it. Achen dat. So the Sefer Kasher says the Chazon Ish, Haytas Shaloli Shtod Bim Komod Elo B'Kelim Shalod He eats asserts. Achen dat Sagan Rav Moshe Feinstein Shaaser Lechol B'Malon or B'Ulamot Larichot Smachot Below Tefila. You need Tefila's Kelim. The caterers have to have to be toivel the Kelim. No question about it. I'll call Ponim Kasher Bor Bivados Shalod Bulo Abayim. Rav Moshe's opinion was actually a bit more nuanced. He distinguishes between foods that must be eaten in dishes, such as soup, which cannot be eaten without a bowl, and utensils that are used for foods that one could potentially eat without a dish, such as a piece of fish. In the former case, it would be forbidden to eat the food without tefillah, while in the latter case, it's permitted to take the food out of the dish and eat it. If you know for sure that they haven't been toyed for the kalim, the nos of the chatich has bos v'chadome, monochos al gabi kli matchois. If you have a piece of meat on a metal kli or glass, ain't on shrichos laetzem a kli, the ain't the ain't a mishdam shin bol tzarach achila. If you don't really need the kli, af shagam kli shem mishdam shin bol advar miveshi mehem gam kein nechshavim kli sudav tzrichim tvila. Av al kevan shein a Michael Nesser yesh laat to bishas atchak li tol. If you don't really need the dish, since the food is not forbidden, you can permit in a pressing case to take with one's hand or in something that does not require to feel and eat it. it. Means like a piece of meat or a piece of fish, take it with a napkin, don't eat it. And, 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 you know, don't eat it directly off the plate if you know it hasn't been toyful. But if it's a soup where you, you need the kli, then you can't eat it. You, since, right? So there, we finished, you can see very complicated sugya, two parts, by the way, Heksher Kalim, which we're doing next, is only one part. Tfilas Kalim had two parts. As you can see, the very complicated uh, laws. Uh, anyway, she should to all of us that we finished it. And we will start with Heksher Kalim. I think it's much more straightforward. Uh, we'll try to complete.